Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Bad Ideas Garage. My name is Steven and this is my 1993 Jeep Grand Cherokee ZJ. I saw this pile of rocks and I was like, you know what? I'm a Jeep driver. I can conquer this pile of rocks. I've also been doing the Jeep wave as I've been driving around town and I feel pretty cool doing it. I need to really soak that in is because I am going to be trading this away next week. And so I need to go do all the Jeep things while I can, including making this review. So that's what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to talk a little bit about how we got this Jeep in the first place. This is a decent example of a Jeep Grand Cherokee. This has 247,000 miles on it, but it's actually in pretty good shape. And so we're going to be talking about that today. We're going to take it on a drive. It's going to be a really good time. So why don't you like and subscribe below. We have a lot of really great things coming up in the Bad Ideas Garage. We have a Buick Rendezvous. I know that that's probably not what you thought that I was going to say, but we have a Buick Rendezvous that I'm going to figure out why in the world it's leaking lots of power steering fluid. I also have a GMC Yukon Denali XL, which is the size of a barge. I'll be doing a review of that and looking into the somewhat questionable air suspension that's on it. But it's actually a really cool vehicle. And then my Subaru is getting back on the road. It was leaking oil. So insert jokes here about Subarus and leaking oil. So what we got going on in the Bad Ideas Garage. And then of course we have everything going on in the Oregon Fire Service Museum. And I'm going to be doing a continuation of the Fire Trucks Friday that I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. So why don't you like and subscribe below and then we'll get going on this review. <laughs> Still drives! And stops! And it stops! So a little bit of history on the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep was looking to replace the Jeep, Jeep Grand Wagoneer. That's a very rudimentary vehicle that had been around for a very long time. Very cool, but they wanted something a little bit more modern. And so that's where the Grand Cherokee came from. Larry Shinoda, who also designed the C2 Corvette, the C3 Corvette, and the Boss 302, the uh, Mustang, um, King Cobra, he designed this as one of his last projects, which is really cool. So when this came out, it was a really big deal. And they've been making the Jeep Grand Cherokee ever since. This particular one has a 5.2 liter V8. They've been putting that in all sorts of vehicles for a very long time. Chrysler has, and this one's a little bit updated version. It has things like multi-port fuel injection, et cetera. But the block and a lot of the underpinnings of the design are decades and decades old. So you had some tried and true things about this vehicle but a lot of modern upgrades. So these are immensely popular. I remember when I was a kid, a lot of people had these. And then when I was in high school, uh, my friend Jeff had one of these and people absolutely loved them. And they were pretty dang reliable. Uh, they had inline six, you had the V8. Uh, There's a limited edition that had a 5.9 liter V8, which is not the most reliable vehicle in the world. But the inline six and the 5.2, they were very reliable. They had tendencies, both of them had oil leak issues. However, these were really reliable. And so a lot of people really like them. And of course, everyone now drives an SUV. And this was kind of one of the OGs about getting people to drive SUVs instead of things like family sedans, rip, and minivans, rip. This particular one, I got on trade for a, about $500 value. My buddy Daniel has a bunch of Subaru XTs and he's like, hey, would you help me sell them? I said, hey, no problem whatsoever. And there was one that I had a hard time selling. And I started thinking, why don't I trade it away? because what I can do is I can add a little bit of cash on it. And plus, I really like Facebook Marketplace. I like scrolling through Facebook Marketplace. And so I talked with a couple of people. I almost got, let me see here, uh, a Ford Taurus SHO, the first generation. I almost got a Mazda 323 GT wagon, which was really cool. And I, I met this guy, Philip, on Facebook. And he said, I wanted a car with pop-up headlights and four-wheel drive would be awesome. And so what he did was he traded that uh, to, to me. And then I got this Jeep. And then Daniel ended up getting some money. So it was really a win-win for everybody. It's kind of fun because I never met this guy before and he literally met me in Adair Village, which is halfway in between his house, my house and the farm. Uh, and I hopped in the truck. He had never seen the Subaru before. I had never seen this Jeep before. And it ended up just being a, a really big uh, blessing for all of us. Yeah, baby. So that being said, I feel like it's time to let it go. I've had this for a couple of weeks now and one of my old students hit me up and said, hey, I'd been looking for this, so I posted a short about this, and he's like, I'd been looking for a V8 version of this since I got out of the military, so I said, you know what, I, I can let this go, it's okay, especially because right now I have like six and a half other vehicles. So this one has a couple issues with the paint, which I'm really not surprised with, especially for how old this is, but if you look into the interior, it's really not bad. Um, please keep in mind, I, I haven't cleaned <laughs> any of this whatsoever since I got it. So the interior besides, gosh, this, 
is very, very complete. Um, there's some interesting wiring in here. The only real thing that doesn't work is the power door locks. Um, but otherwise, the rest of this, it actually looks, it looks really good. Um, I like the aftermarket CD player. It also has a cassette player. So if you're a uh, uh, Gen Z, uh, cassette player is how we used to listen to music back in the day. But you can see that this is just a very, very uh, clean interior in terms of completeness. Of course, it's it's pretty dirty. Uh, back here, um, it, I actually have a really hard time getting the, the, the back open. Dale knows how to do it. Um, I have been very unsuccessful at how to get that open, which apparently is a Jeep thing. Um, this is pretty big. And with these seats down, I could probably uh, do the Gambler 500 and I could probably sleep in here, which is kind of the intention of me getting one of these things. Um, but again, I'm letting it go. This probably was a pretty nice place to go on road trips and such. Let me see here. Oh. Three hours later. There we go. Okay. I think this, this will hold itself up. So, um, this, again, 318 Chrysler V8, uh, multi-port fuel injection, but this is a this is pretty simple. Um, I thought that it was single port fuel injection, but according to the back, this is multi-port fuel injection. This is a pretty simple engine, and it's, I mean, it's even though there's a V8 in here, this is super serviceable. Um, if this had the inline six in it, I would imagine that this would be even more serviceable. It does have a newer battery in it. Uh, Philip said he did that. Um, and then as I was looking up here, um, this bumper is definitely a different color than the rest of the trim. So uh, I'm not sure if that bumper is original to the vehicle. I also, this looks like an alarmingly clean headlight as well compared to that one. So maybe it's been in a front end accident, but I mean, I mean maybe I can't, I can't quite tell. But honestly, this thing just, it just runs really well. All right, so let's go, go ahead and do a, I mean, it's a warm start now. Hashtag car guy problems. I have 13 different keys. And of course, the one that I need, I don't have. Okay. All right. I mean, I just, I can't get over it. Just, this is very, very quiet. The exhaust is definitely rattling. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the cat is out. I honestly think that that sounds, that sounds really, really good. I'm gonna go and try out the low range. I have not done this yet, and I hope that I don't break anything because who knows when the last time the low range has been turned on, but I'm gonna drive over this pile of rocks with a, with the low range on just to see if it's gonna work. All right, so let me see here. Gonna be in drive, and again, that, that's not the most impressive uh, pile of rocks right now, but we're gonna do it. Turn this on as well. Um, uh, maybe neutral. Yep. Okay. Oh, the four-wheeler have low indicator has come on. Okay, now I'm going to put it into gear. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, that's definitely in low gear. And whoop. Oh, that was <laughs> that was uh, that was very underwhelming because I just popped straight over that. Um, Jeep people are definitely going to be laughing at me right now because of what that was like. Um, okay, so uh, it works. So now I'm going to put it back in neutral. There we go. I mean, I really, I can't think of anything more to talk about besides this is just such a simple vehicle and I got it for 500 bucks and people really like them um, and it drives nicer than I thought it would. And uh, so yeah, let's go on a drive and then uh, we're gonna head home and finish up the review for the day. We'll do some decent acceleration. half throttle just going downhill like this it doesn't have the same problem with uh you know feeling a little a little loose uh underfoot but um yeah just overall this thing just has much nicer uh road manners than i thought that it would right now the power windows here fancy that uh, power door locks don't work probably has something to do with the wiring over there in the corner but okay that works Oh, yeah, that's fancy. Um, let me see here. Let me see. This works. Okay. 
So that doesn't actually work. Uh, I know the defrost works. Um, I know that this works. Um, it's just, this is such a simple vehicle. I do know the cruise control works too. Uh, one thing that I forgot to go through is that, look it, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, oh, and Grand Wagoneer. Well then, maybe they did make a Wagoneer in 1993 as well. So it talks about, I mean, it even acknowledges you can drive it off road. I like how, how thin this is compared to like modern um, owner's manuals that are just so long because of all the you know litigation and stuff that people have had about X, Y, and Z. Fun stuff. Uh, no idea what that map is about. Besides, oh, that must be a uh, compass. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, this is the, the Laredo, so it doesn't have a lot of the features that the higher end trim did. Um, it's my understanding that this was the middle trim, and so that's why you got the power door locks and the power windows. So that's that. Uh, we also have, what else is in here? Probably says when the tires were last replaced. Good old Les Schwab tires. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay, so it got an alignment at some point. There it is. Oh, it's in 2023. Okay, that's good to know. Cool. Okay, got this checked out. Free brake check. Oh, okay, so they said that it needs uh, rear brakes. I'm not, I'm not surprised about that. Um, this has drums. Drums last forever, but not actually forever, so I'm not really surprised about that as well. Let me see. I'm going to open this up. There we go. Um, uh, this is old insurance car. So I like this. Um, this is a little notepad that has um, a whole bunch of things that they that they did over time. So whoever owned this car uh, for for many years, it looks like maybe from 2003 to 2009 or something like that. Um, I think they took really good care of it. Oh, 2011, cool. And then there's the new new tags. So we're gonna go in the same loop. Um, that I've gone through on most of my, um, most of the cars that I do. One other thing, uh, the e-brake. You can see that um, the e-brake definitely works, but um, this front part of it's broken off, so it doesn't stay in, in place. So we're gonna just go on our loop that we do with all of our cars. So if you haven't seen our uh, Hyundai Ionic videos, for example, um, this is the same loop that we go on. Actually one on this loop uh, when I had the Hellcat. Um, so you can check that one out as well. It's a very nice loop to see. Um, it's what this is like when you get up to a little bit of highway speeds. There we go. I mean, this this does not feel fast whatsoever, but but getting up to speed in this thing, I mean, it, it, it feels like, it's going slower than it actually is. This also most likely has a clogged catalytic converter that maybe you heard ting, ting, ting in the background. Um, so that might all, that might make this feel sluggish. Um, that's also probably why the check engine light is on. Um, again, I, I just wish that I had more to talk about besides that this is surprisingly quiet to drive on the road. It's, surpri it's got surprising road holding. Um, the, the steering is very, very vague on center, which it might be just due to age because of how many uh, how many miles are on it, but um, it just it just feels really really good. So I'm doing 55, which is what you have to drive here in most places in Oregon. Um, I have taken it up to 65 on I-5 before, and it just it feels exactly the same. It's surprisingly planted, even with a, with standing water on the road. It's surprisingly planted, but you know for for being such an old car that can tow 6,500 pounds and it has a very, very rudimentary setup comparatively to a lot of you know, modern vehicles. Um, I think it's surprisingly capable. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be the case, but uh, the volts uh, are definitely on the high side, but I think that that might just be normal. We're gonna give it, give it some gas here. So that's not all the way down to the kick down switch. I mean, very, just very undramatic. And again, 247,000 miles. Really good oil pressure. The temperature is great. Um, this actually has uh, the expansion tank. Uh, it's, the cap actually doesn't seal all the way, so um, I should probably do that. Uh, I have a new cap for Bryce before he gets it. But I, I wish that there was more to talk about besides just how 
this is just a great car. Going straight on a road like this, even though it's perfectly flat, I mean, you can see that I have a, the slack in the steering wheel. I mean, it drives straight, but I just feel like I have to do this a little bit uh, to, get, to, get, to get it um, going straight. Uh, this corner, so I've done this corner a couple of times in self-driving before. Is it gonna turn? Oh, it's turning! Oh, it's turning! Oh, it's turning! Okay. Only for a little bit. <laughs> uh, but this corner is, is good to see how cars uh, handle the road. I'm going at the suggested speed. So there's, there's a couple of bumps, and again, this is an SUV. A lot of body roll going on, but that was it was never really intended to do anything besides that. I mean, you saw how much flex there was in the chassis when I drove it up on the, on the rocks there. But very controllable, very usual feeling for being, you know, a body on for MSUV. I will also say that the throttle um, is, is, it's not peppy whatsoever. You really have to put your foot into it for it to start moving. It's got a very heavy throttle. However, um, if you do put your foot down, this thing's actually pretty, pretty fast. It does have, I don't know, like up 230 horsepower or something like that, but in this vehicle, it actually feels pretty good. Uh, with the V8, these also could tow like 6,500 pounds, uh, which was pretty good. So this is, was quite the, quite the strong V8 and, and power combination for back in the day. Okay, I'm gonna give a little bit of gas here. This is just surprisingly pleasant to drive around the street. Um, I can tell you that, uh, I mean, I put about a half a tank of gas in this thing, and the fuel economy is not as horrendous as I thought it would be. Assuming that this gauge is accurate, I haven't really done, of course, a scientific study because I haven't had it for very long, but I've put on this vehicle, what, 140 miles on it, and I don't know, I've used however much fuel is in this, so I've used about a half a, half a tank of fuel. So that's really not that bad considering it's been mixed driving between just driving around places that's been very cold, I haven't let the engine get up to operating temperature, it's been some freeway, etc. I really think that the only thing that I can't quite tell is if this steering was this floaty from the factory or if it's just because it's old. And then I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's a hum that's coming from the back, which it could just be fluid. Um, I've read that um, that these, I think the Dana 35 will eventually go out. So it might be the pinion gear, but I only hear that periodically. So maybe with some new fluid that might fix it. Otherwise I'd probably just drive this thing. I charge the AC, the AC doesn't, doesn't turn on, but um, I think I think it's fine. I think it just needs to be charged. I will say that this, this heater is phenomenal. Uh, I mean, it, it heats me out pretty good. There's only like, the, 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 the fan is turned all the way down. It's still very, very good. And even like I'm starting to get up to like closer to highway speeds now. It's still very, very quiet, even though it has all-terrain tires on it. And this is from 1993. It's still very, very quiet. I mean, I can understand why people back in the day wanted to get these, is because they are very, very capable, but they still have really, really good road manners. I'm incredibly thankful that my church um, has a driveway. It's like a quarter mile long, so uh, we're here. The engine's all warmed up. I think we should see what this does on a very unofficial and very untimed, maybe zero to 60 if we make it there. I think that we will. Um, and then uh, I think that we'll also stop. So let's see what that's like. All right, of course, no launch control or anything. Maybe I'll butter, I'll uh, brake, brake torque a little bit. Oh my. Okay, that's 60. Uh, that's better than I thought, honestly. So that's what I got for the 93 Jeep Grand Cherokee. I mean, I thought that once I found kind of like an Overlander or a new Gambler car, because I've been looking for something to replace the Subaru because I wanted to do some body repairs on the Subaru. I'm also kind of tired of, of, of beating it up. I thought that once I found something that I would keep it, but I don't know, the opportunity to sell it to Bryce, and I just, I felt a, a, a calling kind of, uh, to let it go. So um, I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to get this because it's a really fun story. I mean, I traded a, a vehicle away that I didn't even own, but it ended up being uh, a win-win really for everybody. Um, so I, I like when that happens. That's not always the case, of course, with Facebook Marketplace, but it was in this case. Uh, so we're actually going to try to do that again coming up 
um, with another XT uh, that, that Daniel has that has an EJ swap. Um, so make sure and check out that short if you haven't checked that out as well. And uh, I have something that I might be getting that's another Mopar product. This one uh, is a very special tuned Mopar product. So we'll see if that actually um, comes to pass. As always, thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching these videos. This has been a really fun project to be able to do fun things like this. And um, my kids like to play in the cars that I have. Uh, you know, my, my grandpa really liked cars. So it's really cool to be able to chronicle uh, some of the things that I get to do for fun. Um, and then just prove to my kids uh, in the future that I did fun things when I was younger. And then having a rotating, um, you know, list of cars that are in my house is, I mean, I find that to be fun. My, my wife might disagree with that. So that's all we got for the Bad Ideas Garage and catch you in our next video. Make sure and subscribe to us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. It's because for about the last month, I've been putting out unique content for each of those channels. So if you just can't get enough of the Bad Ideas Garage on here, make sure and take a look at those other channels. I'd really appreciate it. See you later. You know, on my way out of the car, I found this. Installed the mud flaps. I installed the ski rack, more or less Schwab stuff. Nothing out of the ordinary that's here, but I just think it's really cool to see that this car was very clearly taken care of.